Number one is thinking about B2B. The difference between B2B and B2C is there's this role of the influencer, the analyst, right, in the, in the traditional, you know, uh, enterprise software, enterprise technology, the, the mythical analyst that puts you in the magic <laughs> quadrant and you need to court them as a vendor and as a customer, you want to look at what they have to say. So certainly in the playbook, you've got to think about who are those influencers or their, those advocates and how do they connect into your network that the most influential people, maybe they aren't even represented on the social channel. So influential doesn't necessarily mean just social influential. Right. And they could have a, they could have a face in one area, Facebook. They could be doing something else on LinkedIn sure. and another personality on Twitter. You've got to be able to analyze all those pieces and then start to think of okay, how do I approach this influence? Yeah, so that brings me to sort of, if, if you will, our top five, aligning with the cycle and the rhythm of how business gets done. So this is applicable in the case of the news cycle in terms of the Rush Limbaugh example. It's in the case of how people buy products, how they, you know, the life cycle of a product. I think this is super important and in a B2B, unlike sort of uh, commodity purchases. What's our third point? So third point would be, and this is, feeding right into what we've been thinking about a lot here at The Pulse is, is content marketing, inbound marketing. You know, be a resource, right? I'm a business, I'm a marketer. I want to be a resource to these communities. The best way to get invited into a community is to have something to offer up. I think a lot of people miss that point, by the way, that you have to offer something. It has to be something that you're going to give this person, uh, this group, in exchange for the amount of time they're going to spend with you. And it's going to be something more than a white paper that yes. extols your product. <laughs> Number four. We've talked a lot about it. Invest in monitoring and listening. So how do you know that they want or they don't want that two-hour PowerPoint? Because maybe some of them do, but we need to invest in listening. Well, that's it. And, and invest in listening to people after you're done with your presentation, after you've made your offer. You know, if people just move on too fast sometimes. They do the quick little survey, five questions, what do you think, like, don't like. But you really need to go back and say, what? Get deeper. Do this ideally before you have to do it. And that's right. back to tying it back to Rush. You know, now again, maybe his model is to persist this outrage because it's sort of good for business. You know, his core is not going away. Right. But I, for almost all other businesses, you need to be proactive that if something does happen, you know, deliver that, that bad news early and get ahead of the curve in terms of, hey, I'm listening. You know, there's something happening with this product or people are confused about what we said or people are frustrated, let's get ahead of this. It's not just offering people a gift, you know, to shut up, but it, rather it's telling people that you're listening, that you care.